Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, peeps. Uh, so, you might have seen our Fostex thing the other day where we did a full custom jobby. Uh, let's just have a look and see how you would kind of do that in a bit more depth. So we're just going to do a simple one this time. That was a dual entry. This one is a single entry pair. So balanced Fostex 250 RP with a mini XLR. So let's, uh, let's have a look and see how it's done. Good and Morgan, my peoples. Uh, what we have today is the Fostex T50 RP. It's a classic uh, modder's delight. So uh, it, it, you might have seen I had the uh, the Hi-Fi Man HE 400 SE. And I'm I was saying how they're the cheapest planar headphones, but um, obviously I'd forgotten about these. These are these are even cheaper. These are a semi-open. And uh, there's loads of companies out there that do do modifications on these because there's just so much headroom for squeezing out more goodness. Uh, right, this is the Mark III, which is uh, the latest version. And uh, someone sent these in to have them converted to take a balanced input. Standard, they're single-ended. And to be honest, one of the weak points of these headphones is the socket in the ear cup there. We've had some that are fresh out of the box that have got a bit of crackle uh, when the cable moves which is really annoying. So replacing that socket is a good mod anyway. So uh, without further ado let's get into these. So I'm just going to remove the pads in the traditional way of hooking your finger underneath and just giving them a good old pull. Uh, yeah the, the edge of the pad just goes into a groove around the, around the side of the ear cup. While we're in there, we can have a look at how these things are made because it's quite interesting, obviously. Um, so underneath there, you've got a bit of foam which will uh, absorb some of the, the sound spilling over. So it's just, uh, just to improve the sound quality slightly. And then underneath you can see the square driver. Now then the driver on these isn't quite as fancy as the one in the HE400. As far as I can tell, and I'm not a driver designer, it doesn't look as fancy. Let's have a look. So I think the other ones might have some more headroom. We got some parts on order, which we're going to mod mod into the HD at uh, the HE400. But this, these, these are where a lot of modders start. You know, I think these cost about 130 pounds, roughly. And the driver in them's got great potential. There's just lots of modifications that you need to do to kind of the casing, the, the enclosure, and adding weights and damping and stuff like that. And you can get some really good sound out of them. If you look online, there's loads of guides uh, with suggestions on how to mod these. Oh, have I undone some screws I didn't need to? Let's just keep, let's keep unscrewing. Warm up the soldering iron while we're at it. So, yeah. So this one's just going to be a, 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 a balanced detachable cable mod. If you want to see a slightly more involved mod, oh my gosh, more screws, more screws, a lot of screws. I think these three actually hold the driver in. I didn't need to undo those at this stage. They're four around the outside of the ones that. That hold the the rest of the ear cap. Sorry, it's been a while since I've had a pair of these apart. Even though we've got a couple of pairs here, um, it's not something we often work on. All right, so I've got that off. I'm just going to pop the screws back where I found them, so I don't lose them. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So anyway, what what was I saying? Yeah, this is going to be uh, just a balanced cable conversion. If you want to see some more serious mods on these, let me know in the comments. Because as I said, we do actually have a couple of pairs just knocking around uh, which we were going to use for a project and we never got around to so I could maybe install a load of the more popular mods on that and go through that with you if you were, if you were interested I might do it anyway if I run out of other stuff to video but uh, you know I'm, I'm going to be more motivated if you lend me a comment if you send me a comment okay so inside here we have the driver and again it's got a little um, foam gasket in between that and the baffle. That will stop any possible vibration as it moves backwards and forwards from uh, not, it won't stop the vibration but it will stop it from rattling. Okay, So I'll remove that. 
and here's the actual driver itself. So as you can see, uh, you'll have magnets either side, and then somewhere in the middle you'll have a diaphragm, which uh, wobbles backwards and forwards, pushing the air around, and the cable <laughs> is soldered to this little circuit board which is on the diaphragm. So the diaphragm will have lines going up and down it. Um, as I said, we're not going to really modify this that much at the moment. We're going to just change the socket that's in there. So I'm just wondering what the easiest way to do this is going to be. Um, right, so the plan is going to be I'm going to fit a mini XLR four pin because that will give us a balanced option with four connections as opposed to three. I'm going to fit it in there. So what we have to do is remove the original socket, drill a hole in there, wire everything up to this, and then we'll make a little blanking plate to go over there to make a nice neat job. Um, for that, I'm probably going to laser cut it just because it'll be more durable, but you could 3D print it or just smush some uh, smush some modeling clay or something in there. Uh, so I'm just going to break this off because we're, <laughs> we're going to have to remove everything anyway. So I'm just going to snap that off and snip the wires. That'll just give me a bit more access. There we go. So that's, that's one driver removed if you want to have a look at that. Uh, there you go. So that's one side. That's the other side. And you can see there's the membrane that's in between the two layers of magnets. So yeah, looking at this with the small holes there, I can definitely see that the, the Hi-Fi Man one is going to breathe a lot easier because you've just got bar magnets going across it. Um, so there's more area for it to, uh, you know, it's less restricted in its movement with the airflow. Um, and then there, that's the headband cable that comes through, goes around to the other side. And what I might do is just remove this ear cup, which is going to give me a bit more room to kind of get in there because it's a little bit awkward with the other one in the way. So from what I remember, there is a screw underneath this, this little doohickey. So I'm just levering up the, whoop, the plastic cover there. Let's leave that back in place afterwards. And then I can remove the screw that's underneath. And that's removed the ear cup from the headband. Okay, that's good. I've got a bit more room to work on it now. So this is a semi-open design, but very semi. Um, so you see that bit of foam there? That's covering over a vent there. So it does allow some air to go in and out, but it's not particularly open. It's definitely a semi-open design. Use some pliers to remove the, the old socket and the supports. It's definitely one of those ones where you know you have to complete it. There's no going back once you've ripped the socket apart. <laughs> There's no getting back from that. Come on. Give up your secrets. There we go. So that's the part of the socket. I'm just going to remove the little plastic legs either side. Uh, again, underneath here, you can see there's little rubber standoffs which go on the back of the driver, which again stop stuff from rattling against each other. So it's well, it's a studio headphone. It's designed to to be pretty good um, but yeah so what what a lot of people will do is they'll add damping material in here which stops the sound from bouncing off there and back through the driver uh, they'll also uh, try and stiffen up the baffle a little bit by adding material to the back of that or adding weight additional weight to the driver so it's got something to push against so yeah I think it would be good to do to do a video with a load of mods uh, for these so so yeah in a few weeks if I have time I might get around to that. Right, so now here we go. So next, next I want to.
pop a hole in there. Um, this is the left ear. So what I might want to do, just trying to think. Don't want that to. Yeah, I might actually stick it through this corner here. So then the corners come. Then the cable will be coming out the front, oh, which will be a bit probably ergonomically a little bit better than it coming out the back. So let's get me my Dremel. I've got a 10 mil burr tool here and I'm just going to take it easy and gradually open up the, the hole until it's big enough and then we'll tap a thread in it and then we should be able to thread in the, the connector. Uh, just triple checking, sorry, dyslexic, never know my left and right. But yeah, that's a left, that would be the front. Cool. Uh, contact. Okay, so I have a hole in there and you can see it's vomited out molten plastic all around there so I'm just going to take that off with a scalpel just neaten that up a bit okay there we go so I'm hoping that's in there neatly gonna tap tap a thread in that now Right, so now we have a new hole with a thread tapped in it. We have an old hole which we need to cover up. And cable, looks like it should reach the socket all right. Just wondering what the easiest way of doing this is gonna be. I think uh, pulling that off, poking that through the hole, and then soldering it on, I think is gonna be the easiest way. We can solder on the wires for the other driver. Um, so what I will do is I'll remove the I'll remove the wires from this driver. And we can solder them onto the socket. I think that'll be the easier way to do it. Okay, so these are going to need tinning. It's interesting. It's got much thicker wires on on that side than it has for the headband cable. So yeah, so the other one that we do, if we do another one, we'll do a dual-sided detachable cable. Actually, I know that I've got one in the queue to do, so we will. We'll do a full a full mod. Uh, it's going to have paintwork and everything. So we'll, we'll, we'll do a full, fully modded version of this as well. So if you're interested in that, give it a couple of weeks and that should be up. Okay, so all I'm going to do here is strip back this wire and tin it a little bit with the soldering iron. Oh, it's got a weird, weird covering on it. There we go. So tinning is just where you add a little bit of solder to the wire itself, which helps it all join together and stops you from overheating parts by having to spend ages trying to get them to solder. So yeah, it's always best to tin the wires first, just get a little bit of solder on there. So I'm, and I'm, I'm using silver solder here, which is a bit tricky. Um, it's just because that's what we normally use for our cables and stuff. I wouldn't recommend using silver solder for this job necessarily. Because it is not the, not the easiest solder to work with. And what you'll normally find on, if you're reusing the, the wires, 
is normally the, the wire has some kind of insulation on it and you need to kind of melt that off so you might find it a bit difficult to solder initially you just need to get it nice and hot Oh, these wires do not want to solder nicely. Oh, I might strip that back and start again. Oh, that's gone all right. I think these might have some fibers in them, like Kevlar fibers or something that's messing with the solder. Yeah, it has. Yeah, so watch out. The wire that's in there has got Kevlar, Kevlar fibers in, which might cause you certainly causing me issues so what you need to try and do is if it's if it's not soldering nicely separate out the copper wires from the Kevlar fibers trim the Kevlar fibers back and then it should solder better let's just try that again Watching a man struggling to get the thing off a wire. It's YouTube gold. YouTube gold. Come on. Come on. You bitch. This is definitely the worst wire ever. Oh wow, this is actually the worst, the worst thing ever. I 
a bit that's tinned now. Finally, finally. That was really hard. That wire is not, not nice. Right, okay. So we're going to do pin 1, left plus, pin 2, left minus, pin 3, right plus, pin 4, right minus. So as this goes through to the right hand ear cup, we're going to be doing three and pins 3 and 4 for this. Okay, so pin four. Let's just put a bit of flux on this. Okay, shrink that back a little bit. Now, when you remove the, if you do remove the wire from the driver, just be very careful not to get the driver too hot, because what you've got to remember is that membrane is on a plastic backing. If you get it too hot, if you leave the soldering iron on there too long, it's going to melt, and then you're going to have a bad time. All right, let's hope this wire is a bit more bloody sensible. Yes, normal wire. Woo, get in there. to pull while those through. Let's pull that back a bit. Okay, tin those ends, which are going to tin much more easily. Yeah, seriously, like the headband cable on these. Oh, not easy to solder. I don't know if it's just because we're using silver solder, which is a bit of a bitch anyway, or whether it's just a not fun wire to solder. Yeah, so it looks like it's got some kind of polyamide type fibers going through it, probably Kevlar. To reinforce it which is good because it makes it stronger but you need to separate those fibers out from the copper really to get a good solder joint which is difficult um did i look which was positive and which was negative does it matter okay luckily positive and negative are marked on the back of the driver that's that's good so it shouldn't be too difficult when we resolder everything so I'm just going to solder these two wires onto the socket. Okay, so that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, <laughs> normally that's the easy bit. Now then, when we stick this in here, there is a thread tapped in it, so I'm going to have to obviously spin it all righty-tighty. But then you will get this wire will be all sp spun round. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin it left. I don't know. A load of times. Before we put it in. And then when we put it in and spin it right, it should kind of unspin. 
Ah, uh, after all that, didn't even need to do it. The thing's not th not thick enough to really. That thread doesn't really work that well. Right. Okay. Let's untwist that badger. Okay. Just the final bit. We're going to need some kind of solution in here for holding that in place. So we're going to need some industrial grade hot glue. Okay, so we've got that in there. We can pull this this one back through a bit. Uh, solder our while well, we're waiting for that the glue gun to heat up, we can solder solder our driver back on. for the soldering iron to heat up. So that's the wires attached to the driver again. Oof. And then after we've done this, we've got to make it a balance cable, but we won't bother going through that. But I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Just waiting for the hot glue gun to heat up. So that's pretty straightforward. You know, we've drilled a hole, we've soldered on a couple of wires. It's not that. It's not that hard. So converting these to bands isn't bad, and also replacing the socket that's in there is probably a good idea anyway, because they tend to, I don't know, they tend to be a little bit, a little bit iffy anyway. And this is why you should have lots of forethought and put the glue on, put the glue gun on first. Got to get it really hot, and we're using the the slightly stronger, more industrial glue with this one, just to give it a bit more, a bit more stickiness. So I put glue all around the socket just to give it some support in there as well, just in case it gets yanked on. It's gonna stop it from coming loose. So it's kind of sticking it in place, stopping it from unscrewing but also the build up around it's going to give it some support so if it's yanked from side to side it's going to yeah it's going to going to give it a bit more support and hopefully last forever you just wait for that to glue and uh, and the reason we get the glue gun really hot is so that it flows into all the tiny nooks and crannies if it's not heated up fully it'll kind of just sit on the surface uh, but we really want it to be thin enough so to soak into every every area so that it's well stuck give it more surface area to stick to
the other disadvantage of putting in loads of glue at a very high temperature is it takes a long time to then uh, solidify. Okay, right, we're in. Glued, as Welsh people would say. <coughs> Covered in glue. Okay, then. Fabulous. Right there. Let's have a look. What's this then? Um, now we've got to stick it all back together. This is where I found that I haven't left myself enough room above the socket, but I think it should just, should just fit. Right, so putting it back together is the reverse of how we took it apart. So we're going to pop that on there. Going to release the screws. This was a terrible idea. You should always uh, stick the screws back in the actual threaded holes. <laughs> Resting them in the holes in the thing is not. It's not done me any favors. Right, let's poke those out. Okay. Another thing you can do is you get a bit of tape, and you can use that as a little corral and put all, your, put all your screws in there if you haven't got a little tray the inside of a bit of tape is is ideal honey who uh, right let's get this screwed into that so which way around does this go it's got a little gasket on that goes on there Ah, 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 it's got, it's got booby traps. Watch out, your screws can disappear. <laughs> Damn little holes in the side. Let's get a screwdriver. That's fabulous. Right there. Screws, let's go. Oh, you little buggers. Fucking hell. Oh, oh I'm having a bad time. Oh, these Fostexes do not respect me. Sennheiser are better than I would bend to my will. They'd know I'd know what I'm doing. There's this this Fostex knows. It knows. I'm not 100% certain about this. It's deliberately making it as difficult as possible to get the screws in. Uh, uh, we're in. We're in. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Now, let's. Oh, yeah, we don't want to forget the little. Um, that little bit there. This basically seals up the, the hinge. Oh, it's all coming back to me now. I need to screw that on first, don't I? Yeah. See how the other one, the cable goes through the what's it? Okay. Okay, so that goes on there. Arms go through those. That goes on there. Flippy flappy. This goes in there. That's actually got a little bung. Yeah. So air shouldn't escape anyway. Um, screw that together. Little bit of glue. Put the flap back on. There we go. Now. Here's the bit where I might cry if this doesn't fit back together with the socket in there. I have got two more pairs, so I can uh, can fix this. I'll get the cable out of the way. Oh, we're golden. It's in. Phew. As is tradition with any job like this, it looks like one of the screws. Oh no, I can see it. I thought I thought we lost a screw. 
it's just going for a walk. Yeah, a magnetic screwdriver would be handy for this job, getting the screws down into the holes. I think this is slightly magnetic. Let's see if I can just balance the screw on the end. Yeah, so get the screw on the end like that, and then you can whoop. The problem is you need a third hand, really. I think a third hand is, is, is what's missing from the, the human platform. All right. Oh, I need a more magnetic screwdriver than I've got. Come on. Oh, no, no. Oh, this is the worst. <laughs> Come on. Wow, this has been unusually difficult for such a simple job. It just goes to show, like, now I know what it's like for you lot who aren't just doing this all the time, because this is the first time I've had one of these apart in probably over a year. Uh, right, so now, now we are phase one done. We have a socket in there. Now I need to make something to seal that hole up and uh, and make a cable and then we can test them. So leave it with me to cut something to cover that hole up and then we're going to make a nice cable and then we can test them. Right, there you go. So that was a... Uh that was it. It's it's not too bad a job. Uh, it's about the same as doing some DT770, you know, some, some bay dynamics or something. And then once you've got your four pin jobby in there, you can then plug in your fancy balanced cable. So we've got like a 4.4, um, oh, and then you can change it to like an XLR or something. There we go. So yeah, that's a nice nice little mod on those. Obviously these are these are great for modders. Yeah, uh, I don't know if we showed it, but yeah, we just 3D printed a little bit to cover up the, the original socket there. To be honest, the socket in these is a bit of a weak point. I've had a couple of pairs of these where the socket just crackles all the time when you move it. So I would say, you know, if you're a little bit into DIY, sticking a different socket in is probably a good idea anyway. And while you're in there, you might as well do a couple of other mods. So yeah, if you've got any questions, uh, if there's anything else that you want to see some basic mods on, let me know and we can probably film that because we're we're constantly working on bits and bobs anyway yeah give us a like maybe subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of thing uh i don't know like you guys are probably nerds and often interacting with the opposite sex is difficult and i don't know if, if i can't think of anything that's more likely to get you laid than subscribing to this channel it, it just, it's just how it is it's just how it is it's just how it is so, subscribe, guarantee success with the opposite sex. That's just, just, just fact. Just fact.